Tunis, a North African city of tradition and transformation. And at its heart, a museum with secrets, dark and strange. How to cheat death in the Sahara. How to kill a gladiator. How the catapult toppled an empire. And the surprising location of a galaxy far, far away. Secrets hidden in plain sight inside the Bardo National Museum. If you travel down the boot of Italy and stand on the southern tip of Sicily, you can see Africa. Across the water is a nation called Tunisia. Just 300 kilometers wide, Tunisia stretches south from the Mediterranean through fertile farmland that becomes dry steppes and finally, the desert wastes of the Sahara. Tunisia combines European, African and Middle Eastern influences a blend of cultures that is reflected in the Bardo National Museum. Inside is evidence that Tunisia was colonized by the Arabs. Before them, the Romans. Before them, the Carthaginians. And throughout Tunisia's history, Berber tribes have made its deserts their home. A few decades ago, these deserts were invaded by another tribe led by a Hollywood director named George Lucas. Lucas chose Tunisia as the shooting location for Star Wars. The desert became the planet Tatooine, a name borrowed from a nearby town. This is what's left of the movie's spaceport. We don't need to see his identification. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Not far away is the set for Luke Skywalker's boyhood home, the Lars Homestead. Luke! Luke! Every year, the sets attract Star Wars fans from around the world. Everybody loves the movie, you know. It's very famous <laughs> in Korea, too. When this set fell into decay, some super fans teamed up to repair it. For them, it's a revered icon with Tunisia just a convenient backdrop. But in reality, the connections between Star Wars and Tunisia run deep. Where to find them is a museum secret. The investigation begins with an arrival at the Tunis airport. Terry Cooper, a British science fiction illustrator, has made the Star Wars pilgrimage several times. I saw Star Wars in uh, 1977 as an eight-year-old, and that's one of the, uh, obviously, a big blockbuster at the time. It changed the way films were made, and uh, it kind of changed my life. Because as an eight-year-old, watching a film like Star Wars just tells you anything's possible. On this trip, Terry's guide will be a young man from Tatooine, the town, not the planet. His name is Rad Adala. Rad is also a Star Wars fan, but he sees it from a Tunisian perspective. So, as you see, it looks just like the Lars homestead, and that's originally from the Muslim architecture. So there is one there, one there, one up yeah. there. This architecture appears in Star Wars, with the addition of an extra sun. I think it was a very wise move for George Lucas's part. There was this completely alien culture and feel to these buildings that uh, no one had ever seen. And it was very clever of him to, to take that uh, at the time. Down these stairs is another Star Wars connection. For centuries, Berber tribes built dwellings underground to beat the heat. It looks like a Star Wars set, but it's a real home. The couple who live here have turned one room into a tiny museum. It has all the traditional Berber things, like the traditional art, craft, carpet. Yeah. The woman of the house weaves cloth in the traditional Berber way. And here we have the Berber clocks, okay? You just put it 
as a rope. And let's over your head, like this. Exactly. Leave it. You can see where they got the uh, Jedi Knights idea. Yep. But while traditional Berbers are nomadic traders, the Jedi are warrior monks who strive to become one with an unseen force. Through the force, things you will see, other places, the future, the past. The Jedi are mystics, and it so happens that the Star Wars sets are near the spiritual home of Islamic mystics called Sufis. Sufis are famous for a whirling dance that looks a bit like a Jedi fighting move. But the connection here is not the spinning. The Jedi religion may have been inspired by Sufi beliefs. They even sometimes have a vision okay. for the future. They right. can see the future. Okay. This right. is the myth. Just like the miracles. Exactly. When night falls, Terry and Rad accept a rare invitation to witness a Sufi ritual that few outsiders have ever seen. Some Muslims think that Sufis are not true followers of Islam, but Sufi master Munir Maisa strongly disagrees. Sufis believe that music can help believers achieve a higher state of being. These men are all hoping that the change will happen to them. And for one believer, it does. He appears to have fallen into a trance state. The Sufis believe he's been touched by the divine. It creates a big impression on uh, people, even on me, because it strengthens and reinforces their beliefs, and it underlines the seriousness and the devotion to their faith. Before Terry heads home to England, he wants to pay a visit to this Star Wars set one last time. He not only likes it, he was one of the super fans who restored it. Good, actually. The weather's beginning to take its toll, but it's, it's no longer bright as it was. Yeah. The first time I ever went there, I felt like I'd stepped through the screen into the film, because it's all around you. The heat, the sand, the look of the place, the exotic uh, locations, but you feel like you're standing right in the middle of Tatooine. If Luke Skywalker went to the country Tunisia, the first thing he would say was, it looks just like my home. <laughs>